So today we are going to explore an extraordinary journey, how to turn or how to change our business from a normal business into an entrepreneurship. Amira, could you please introduce yourself and what do you do for business? Yeah, absolutely. So first, thank you for having me. And my name is Amira and I'm a business lawyer and blogger over at asopru.com where I help entrepreneurs make money online and also um, help them legally protect their businesses through my uh, templates or one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. So my, my first question here is why did you decide to start a business? So great question. Um, I was working for like years as a lawyer and I felt like I had uh, gotten to the point where there wasn't enough growth and I wanted to take all of that knowledge and information and help more people um, in the online space. And I also had a big massive debt. So I had $150,000 of student loans because of law school that I was working hard to pay off. And with my, even with my six figure lawyer salary, it just, it's hard because, you know, you got mortgage, you got other obligations and I needed to supplement my income and um, make sure that I was able to pay off that debt. So that was one reason. The second reason was that I was working one-on-one uh, -on -one with clients as a lawyer, but it just wasn't enough. I felt like I wanted to help more people on a bigger scale. So I decided to use all of that knowledge, the legal expertise and the business background to just go ahead and start my online business. Um, and I started it as a blog and then it you know, uh, transformed into this um, online business of helping entrepreneurs. So do you see that entrepreneurship and especially online can be, let's say a work opportunity for young people? Oh my God, absolutely. Now more than ever because the potential is endless. Um, the possibilities are endless. Um, you can reach people on a greater scale. You can really take your education, your, your skills and your expertise and help so many people in the online space versus um, you know just one-on-one. -on -one. So yes, it is definitely um, a great opportunity now more than, and then plus now, you know, even with the COVID thing that happened, so many people are consuming content online you know, and the, from the comfort of their home. So it's a great way, um, even if it wasn't a permanent thing and you just were doing it as a side hustle, it is still a great idea to pursue entrepreneurship, even with your job. I mean, that's what I did. Yeah, that is awesome. So why did you decide on like, like the legal side on online business? Why not other kind of businesses? Well, yeah, no, that's a really interesting question. So. When I first, to be very honest, when I first started uh, blogging, that's the, the platform I chose for my online, you know, communication and connecting with people as a bit on and blogging as a business. I thought I was going to uh, talk about self-employment, like how to, you know, and all these other topics. But once people found out that I was a lawyer and they, so they started reaching out to me with legal questions, like how to blog legally, uh, what kind of legal contracts I need to protect my business, or how do I do this legally, or how do I start a business legally, or how do I form, you know, all these um, like LLC in the US and legal documents I need. So all of a sudden I got all these questions because people knew that I was working as a lawyer for like 10 years. And so it made sense for me to kind of use that knowledge and information and really create a product or, you know, come up with like a way that I could help these people. Um, and again, it was on a bigger scale. So I, you could say that my audience found me before I, you know, before I found them. So they knew exactly what they wanted for me to help them with. And that's exactly what I decided to do then. So let, let take us on a, on a short journey. What kind of preparation, let's say professional preparation or personal pre preparation did you go through to be able to launch a business? Okay, so no real preparation. Um, so <laughs> note, I have no technical background. I have never had an online business before. Um, the only preparation I did have to um, do was just time management because I started my online business, like my side hustle while I was working a full-time job as a lawyer. So during the day I was a lawyer and then at night I was a blogger and on the weekends I was also working on my business to grow and monetize. 
So time management was essential. Like discipline was really crucial because I had to be very strict with, you know, at really balancing my time, making sure that whatever those four hours I had left after my full-time job, that I was utilizing them to the fullest. And then also the other thing that helped is, and I would give this uh, advice to anyone who's thinking about entrepreneurship, is to get rid of that perfectionist mentality. Like I am a perfectionist by nature. I, you know, as a lawyer, you have to be kind of a perfectionist because you have to, um, you have to be detail oriented. You're looking at every little thing to make sure that you're not, you haven't missed something crucial for the client. So I came to business with that mentality that, oh, everything has to be perfect. But boy, I was wrong because in business, if you wait for everything to be perfect, like if I waited to be, you know, looking the best to be on camera, we would never get this interview over with, right? Because I would be just analyzing everything. So in business, you just have to do it. And so I had to like really um, get rid of that mindset and change my thinking and get into the habit of doing more than thinking, if that makes sense. So let, let me ask you another question here, like, was 10 years professional experience enough for you to be able to uh, sell yourself as a brand, as a business? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that is a great, like that's a lot of experience to be able for people to trust you, to respect you. And more than that, you know, branding really doesn't just come from experience. Yes, you. it's important to have experience and be an expert in your field. But it also is important how you do it. So how you help people, what kind of content you put out there or how, what kind of useful information you give them even as a free, you know, for free. And I give a lot of information on my website and my blog for absolutely free. So all of that really helps build that credibility and that reputation because people start to associate you with quality. So, um, and then after your product, once they purchase your product, it's also important that how good your customer service is or how good your product is for it to really, uh, for you to sustain in business, right? For you to be memorable, for you, for people to keep coming back to you. So all of these factors come into play besides just the fact that, oh, I have this 10 years of experience. I mean, anyone could have a 10 year of experience, but that doesn't mean they're gonna be successful in business. Does that answer your question? Another question here, like <clears throat> throughout the 10 years professional experience, was it only working in your office or did you read books? Did you work on yourself? Did you increase your knowledge some way? Oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, I think we're always growing, right? We're always evolving. We're always growing as human beings. So yeah, I mean, absolutely. I love reading. I love writing. It's yeah, it's part of who I am. That is great. So my question here about your templates and one-on-one -on -one coaching, like what, what do you exactly do? How do you help the customers? Okay, so good question. So when I say templates, uh, what I mean is like, you know, on, whenever you start an online business, um, let's say you are into, you know, creating content for YouTube, um, you are a blogger, you're a coach, or you're a freelancer, whatever kind of online presence you have, if you have a website, you're going to want to make sure that you have it legally compliant, you know, you're following the laws, you have um, website legal pages, you may have seen things like privacy policy, a disclaimer, a disclaimer, terms and conditions on your website or terms and conditions for the products that you sell on your website. So these are like the kind of legal documents that, you know, no matter what kind of entrepreneur you are, you're going to need to cover yourself legally. But beyond that, even let's say you're hiring people for your business, you're going to need a contract with them, right? No matter where you are. Um, or if you are working with companies um, to, you know, produce content like sponsor posts and things like that, you're going to need a contract. So contracts, contracts are like those essential things in business that no matter what you're doing, you're going to need at some stage, right? So this is where I come in. I take care of that legal stuff for you. Um, I have like easy done for you templates that I created um, that you can instantly download. They're super easy to fill in the blanks and then you begin using and start protecting your business and start using those contracts. 
connect with the people that you work with. And then coaching, um, to answer your question about coaching. So that comes into play because of my success, like in my first year of starting the business, I made $210,000. And then now I built it into a seven figure online business. So because of my success, people have reached out asking questions about like tips or things that they can do to also uh, be able to, you know, quit their nine to five job because I was able to do that um, because of my business. So I help entrepreneurs now do the same um, while also making sure that they're doing it legally. So let's get back to the um, documents and templates. W what kind of documents do you basically recommend uh, online business owners to have? Okay, so if you're starting like your online business and you have a website, there are at least three documents that you should have and you may have seen these in the people on people's websites in the footer section so number one privacy policy and i'll briefly just kind of tell you why so that way you, you know it makes more sense so a privacy policy is basically like a legal document that tells the visitors that visit your site that hey what information you're collecting from them information like their name their email address um, payment information and then how are you going to use that information? So under what circumstances you'll disclose. So we have data protection privacy laws around the world. And so we need to ensure compliance with that. So it's one of those um, legal documents that's required. So that's number one. The number two is what's called at the bare minimum you need is a disclaimer because when you're giving like information and we're in the digital space, you don't want anything you say to be construed against you or you don't want something uh, for someone to hear and take advice and then go after and suffer a negative consequence and come after you for damages so that's why a disclaimer on your website kind of protects you from all those kinds of lawsuits and also um, ensures and lets people know that hey all the information on your site is just for informational purposes um, it shouldn't be construed as advice and that people are responsible for what they do with that information so that it limits your legal liability the third legal page is what's called terms and conditions so if you have a business you have a website you have a right to dictate how um, you know, what are the rules of your website? How do you want to run it? You know, what are the kind of things that you allow, what you don't allow? So you want to include all of that stuff in the terms and conditions page of your site. And then let's say you sell products. I mean, it could be a digital ebook. It could be, um, you know, like templates like I do or, or a course or anything. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you have terms and conditions conditions because then you need to let your customers know that what they can and cannot do with your product and this is the way that you avoid disputes because what if tomorrow a customer says I want a full refund if you didn't have terms and conditions and you didn't have a refund policy now you you would lose all of that money and you would be obligated to give the refund so these are some of the ways why the legal documents and contracts and things like that come into play to protect you but also the you know, to protect your relationship with the customers or the people that you serve. That is awesome. And what recommendations would you give to, uh, let's say, new online entrepreneurs? In terms of uh, like just starting or, yeah, you know, in yes, terms of yeah, stuff? Yeah. Okay. So if you're just starting your business um, as a new, as a brand new entrepreneur, I would always recommend that you first, you know, invest in yourself and your business in the sense that whatever, you know, kind of business you're starting, learn something about it, like learn from an expert who's already done it. So for example, I got into the blogging business without any experience, but I was smart enough to invest into a course to learn it. So this way, I wasn't just going completely blindly into this business without knowing what to do. So I had like some mentors and some people that I could reference back to ask questions and get that support. So I think support is so important in entrepreneurship because it can be a lonely experience and there are going to be trials and failures and experiments and all the kind of good stuff. And you can easily get discouraged if you don't see the results that you're looking for. So that's where having that community, that support, that someone you can go to and someone that you trust and build that relationship with is going to come in, is going to really be helpful for you. Because I know for me, 
just having even Facebook communities as support or even my own Facebook group where I provide support, I know that that makes a huge difference um, in entrepreneurship because we have each other to, you know, go to questions with and help each other. It has been more than amazing talking to you, Amira, today. I really thank you so much for these, uh, for this important information. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.